There it is. We're in. No, uh... No beacon of virtue. It's gonna be a little scary, but we'll see. Here's the gear and talent setup one more time before we start. I'm gonna go right into this and just stun the fungi storm. Stormers are what's gonna be that that that's what will kill our group, so I need to make sure I'm on top of interrupting this. I'm just gonna wings and ash in here. And they stun that one, so I'm gonna stun the next one with my blinding faith. Just putting damage into the big guy here. can save my blinding for the next pack. We have to be really careful of because Reventhir is the downtime when we don't have cooldowns. That's when stuff is going to be incredibly terrifying. So I'm going to blinding faith this first fungi storm right here. That way we don't take AOE damage. We're just helping do damage to these. Really want to kill the fungi swarmers as fast as possible, but it is bolstering, so we kind of have to even it out a little bit. And then I have Hodge for this one, so I'll just Hodge that one. I'm not even going to wait to see if anybody else does it. We're just going to do it. And then the next pack we won't really have anything for, so it's kind of on our group. Or we just use healing cooldowns and stuff to fight through it. So he's gonna pull this side pack over here. I'm gonna aura mastery right now, because the fungi storm doesn't look like it's gonna get interrupted. So we're just gonna preemptively cast that. Even if it got interrupted right away, it's still worth it to preemptively cast that. If I waited to cast that Ori Mastery, we I mean we could have easily lost a player or two. So it's really important to just pre-cast that kind of stuff. There's another fungi storm. This one we'll be okay with because he's gonna die mid-cast. More fungi stormers, so nothing really to worry about, just keeping the tank alive is our only concern now. See how much he pulls here. I'm gonna preemptively put sacrifice on him so that he doesn't take a bunch of damage when he's pulling this. Then we're gonna walk in, we're gonna arcane tour on all these off, and we're gonna kind of step away a little bit because they do damage when you're close to them. Generate holy power out here on the edges. I need to close my battle net really quick so I can lag. And this is where these are gonna do a bunch of damage if we're standing next to them. I'm just gonna stay out here. Even though I can't generate any holy power, it's worth it because I'm gonna be just taking too much damage by standing in there. And then we can just, uh, yeah, unfortunately tank's gonna die there and I can't really do anything about that. I'll bop one of them so that if I get meleeed, they'll be alright. Well, cool. that worked out okay. He's probably gonna pull the rest of these. don't really do that much damage until they start bolstering. That's like when they start doing a bunch of damage. So as they bolster, I just walk away from them a little bit. We can mostly just do damage to these because the faster they die, the less of a problem they are for all the ad spawning and stuff. Yeah, some ad spawning back here. We'll hodge this first one. Avoid the frontal. And if these get closer to us, we're gonna run over here and blind them like this. That way they sit there for a few seconds, and then that buys us enough time without our group needing to worry about it. And instead of waiting to blind them when they get like into melee, because then they're just gonna break out. So I run over and blind them in a pug. So then my, my DPS don't have to worry about
gonna bubble this first one. Unfortunately, I don't have bop. If you have bop, you can actually bop one of the ranged DPS, like the Shaman or the, uh, the Balanced Druid, and they'll be immune to the knockback. They'll still get the debuff, but they won't get knocked back, and they will be immune to like the initial burst of damage that they take. So it's actually huge to put bop on it, like a caster that doesn't want to move around too much or be interrupted. Thing. We're gonna blind me. Uh, my blind's not up yet. So we're gonna wait a second and then now we'll blind. Lucky. So I might go into the boss. Dull myself. Probably should have dispelled somebody else. I'm gonna run out of this at the last second. I'm lucky. The aura master here. Should have aura mastered this first or the, the second stomp. Land hands the hunter. I don't know how much damage we're gonna take from that. Spell the shaman. Holy Avenger here. We're healing through this again. Okay. This isn't looking too good. I don't think we're gonna be able to do anything in time. Just try to heal through all this. Can you use Hammer of Wrath on that slime to try to kill it? Shaman has Onk. I'm gonna try to just spit out as much damage here as possible because if we get another wave of ads, we definitely lose. I need to heal up the Shaman there, so I use my Word of Glory on him. As soon as he onked, he was only half HP. Yeah, we're good. Let me kill him here. Okay, that was spooky. Okay, so with these Plague Borers here, we can actually use Freedom on our tank preemptively. I used it too late there, but when the Plague Borers cast their, um, let me see what the cast is actually called. It's the Wretched Phlegm. Kind of let the tank die there, I had nothing. Um, when they cast Wretched Phlegm, you can use Freedom on the tank. And it'll make him immune to the damage because it's like a slowing debuff that they put on the, on the player, but it also does like a huge burst of damage, like the Druid's probably getting one shot here. Okay, it did like a decent amount of damage even through bark skin and bear form right there. If I just put freedom on him preemptively next time, so I'll try to do it on this next one. Okay, it's gonna blow up, so I can't do anything about it. But yeah, freedom makes them immune to the damage and the slow if you just use it on them before. So you just have to apply freedom before they get hit by the debuff. And it negates like so much damage in hierarchies, especially on fortified weeks. Where they like can one shot your tank if they don't have a big defensive. save my wings and ashen hollow here for like the next kind of big pull because i don't know what we're necessarily pulling yet but i would like to use this soon that way i have wings up for pride and in these keys we really need to think about pride that's going to be like our hardest you know obstacle as a as a healer is the prides and the bosses the trash in this dungeon is pretty straightforward and simple Frontals are going to be very, very awkward. I 
think I could have been safe to wing this Ash in here, but it's kind of too late. Feels kind of unlucky for holding it this long. I should have just used it by now. Especially because a lot of these bolts are going to be like this. They're going to be really straightforward and we're not going to be doing that much on them. I might as well just get it on cooldown. Worst case is I just hold it for pride now. That's all that really matters anyways. Okay, he's pulling these guys over here. If he pulls them into these other slime cause, this is where... Um, yeah, I'm gonna wing Zash in here. I don't know how worth it it is because we're gonna get pride very soon and if I don't have wings back up by then, we're, we're in a lot of trouble. Dispelled too soon there. I should have waited because I had dispelled so that the the tank could walk out of the explosion, but he got hit by it still. So that's really unlucky. I should have just waited to see if he get, got hit by it and then dispelled him. Maybe, or I just sack him earlier next time, I don't know. Kinda tough. Oh man. Now this is the pull I'd want to use um, Wings Ashen on for sure. I just didn't think I thought we were skipping it. But this is why we adapt, so you're going to Dispel those uh, roots that happen on players. Actually, I think it's typically better to use freedom on the roots and then dispel this uh, corroded claws debuff. I think it's much more important to dispel that. I'm gonna save aura mastery for. I mean, this guy's like using plague bores to blow up the mobs and stuff. This guy's smart. So we are in at 16, so. I have another set of plague boards to blow this pride up. I'm gonna use Holy Avenger here just early because this plague board is gonna kill the pride, so all I need to do is make sure that we live until then. And now I can pop Aura Mastery just to get us through the last little bit of the pride while the plague board kills it. There we go. Now, if we didn't have a plague bore there, we were in a lot of trouble. Like without, because my wings wasn't up yet because we planned it improperly. So next time it's definitely the play to just save wings in uh, Ash and Hollow and just not use it at all until Pride spawns. Now we have wings back up. Just want to use it right away. I don't know how long I'll be sitting here holding it, so we're just going to use it right now just to do damage, and then we'll have it back up when we like go down the stairs to the other dangerous mobs. It's kind of like a waste here, but and we're gonna run over and blind this one. So it got pulled. And we just blinded it just to waste its time, because if it, if no one's in melee range with it, like the tank. My dryer was going off. Um, if no one's in range of the the mob, it'll just start like spam casting these vile spits on people, and it just it pretty much one shots your whole group. So. I just use sack on the tank here, I think. And also freedom here. You see those two wretched flims, and it just made them immune to the the cast completely. Oh no, he got hit again. Freedom that. I'm gonna use wings and uh, Ash and Hollow here again. Well, man, it's tough because we have pride spawning soon after this. Yeah, I'm gonna save it. 
too much of a risk to not have Ashen for the pride. Freedom that. On the red slime so it doesn't keep AoE casting on the whole group. I can use wings here though. I think it'll, yeah, wings will be back up. Uh, yeah, maybe that was the wrong choice. I think I had to use wings at the start of this pull in order to have them back up in time. If you stand in this red stuff, you actually get a huge haste buff, so as long as you're not gonna like die to it, it's completely worth like having everyone stand in it. Gotta be careful of the boss jumping here. Yeah, we definitely do not have wings up for pride. This is actually really bad. We might just have an Ashen without wings on pride, which is kind of awkward. That's kind of the first rule is you play cast Ashen without wings because it significantly makes it it just makes it significantly less effective in healing and damage. Um, let's see what we can do. Holy Avenger here. Okay, we just 100% heal through this without anything, so... Or without using Wings and Ashen, and I have Wings and Ashen for boss, so I guess it's fine. Holy Avenger hard carries. Dark Moon deck. Okay. And then we'll use Wings and Ashen on the first phase when the boss jumps platforms. We still get a little bit of pride buff with it. Helping do DPS here to the boss. Gonna leap here. And then this is where we wings and Ashen. Wings Ashen. Do damage to the boss until the bomb spawns, and then we're helping with the bomb. Oh my god, no, I'm so bad. Up. Almost one shot us with this eye level. Need the slime too, that's actually insane. You guys are nuts. there immediately. I think this is gonna blow up. Okay, there we go, holy. Holy. Gotta keep the tank alive here. Master you know. I could have used our Mastery there, for sure. There's no reason to hold it actually now that I'm thinking about it. Bulls. I try to do this little trick, some people get really mad about it, but it's actually super effective. Or if you just pull the slime that's standing over here on red, um, it just pulls the slime and the defender, so you can do like this four pull here, which is actually really nice. He's blind there to break the tentacle and the defender. I'm just putting too much damage into the slimes. But it's okay. Just our cleave is pretty nuts. Yeah, it just breaks up these poles, so it makes them so much easier. So then when you go into the middle here, you don't have like two more guys that bolster the entire pack. You just deal with like four guys here now. 
Makes this bowl so much easier. Less chaotic. I'm gonna use wings here for sure. Save Holy Avenger. He's gonna pull this stuff. Interesting. Gonna purge that off the slime. Sell things in three seconds if we don't have anything to break them out. Okay, we have a cap toe. There's still a few castings, so I'm gonna blind. I'm gonna go into this pack. This will be Holy Avenger for sure. I end up casting. I'm gonna get just cast it right away. This pack immediately is dangerous. And then we'll have maybe Wings Ashen for the next or Need to kind of save Wings Ashen for, uh, I don't know, Pride or the boss. The boss is pretty hard, too. I'm gonna sack the tank. Gonna bubble. Watch the sniper here, too, to help reduce some damage. Should have done that a lot sooner. Try to delay my wings and action for so that it overlaps kind of into the ride as well. I can turn evil this guy. It's really late. Oh well. I have nothing for these. Someone's gonna die right now. Oof. Hold on me. Blind that. I'm actually totally safe to just save Wings and Ashen for the Pride specifically. Yeah, I just use it now. Nothing to interrupt these, so I hope they don't kill everybody. I'm gonna Aura Mastery, because those are gonna jump on someone. Okay, they jump on me. I got bolstered at the same time too, that was really scary. Luckily I have plates, so like I don't take that much damage from them compared to the Druid or the... I guess we're all pretty... I guess it's just the druid that would be kind of in danger there. Any damage to the pride here because we don't really need to worry about healing. Druid's probably gonna get assassinated there almost, yeah. Not looking good, I'm in a health pot. The shaman. Yeah, the surprise are scary. Here we're just keeping the group topped off as much as possible for these, the shadow ambushes. And then we're helping do damage to the boss. And then these come out, I'm just gonna run over here, drop Consecrate. Only broke out one, that was mostly I think the hunter that broke those out. Spell the tank. Keep the tank alive. Let's use sack right now. I think next time I need to save sack. Cause I should be using sack at like the start of an ad phase, not once we kill all the ads. Cause once all the ads are dead, you're kind of out of danger. When the ads are all like spawning, that's when you're in the most danger as a healer, like in terms of your group. So where I would sack, I would sack right now as the ads are spawning. Instead, we're just gonna use Holy Avenger here. Generating and spending on whoever's lowest. Wing tank, that's always like top priority. These wings here too for damage. Help finish off the boss. 
attacked by the tank. New assassins, we don't really have much for these. I might have... Next time I guess I save wings for this particular spot. See the ad spawn. But my wings carry over. Uh, yeah, my wings are going to carry over for the whole duration of the ad, so it's actually fine. I could bubble this, but I'm going to save my bubble. Just so I have it for last boss, because I don't know if it's going to be up in time. Probably would be, but I don't really want to take a risk on it just to take less damage from that, or no damage from it, when I could just survive it with my first small. Trying to math out of my head right now if I should be. I think I'm just gonna use wings on Pride. Help do as much damage as I can. I probably should have waited to cast wings just a little bit, but maybe not. This lasts so long and these Prides die so quick. So I think we're. Yeah, we're good. My wings expire. If my wings expire before the Pride dies, then next time I need to save my wings for like a little longer. So next time I save my wings for like an extra two seconds, but it really doesn't matter. And then that way I'm saving Ashen for the boss. This boss might be really terrifying, I'm kind of worried. With my eye level, like, healing this is going to be hard. I definitely dispel myself every single time. I don't want to get hit by those smashes, so I just stay right outside of it. Spell with three stacks here. And lay on hand. Dark and deck. That, I did not do that one correctly. I should have definitely used Aura Mastery. I was like hesitant to press anything on the first one. And I ended up having to use like lay on hands and almost losing people if they didn't play really well by themselves. Yeah, I'm gonna use Aura Mastery here. And that's fine, even though it just heals two stacks. That's actually still totally fine. Hodge this uh, devoted because it aggroed to me because I healed. So if I wouldn't have hodged it, it probably would have just like kept meleeing me and killing me. It already hit me once, so I should have hodged it like even sooner than that before it meleeed me once. Because in a higher key, that would just kill you. And then in this phase, we will use 
Probably Wings and uh, Ashen, maybe. Or Holy Avenger. Right, we're gonna use Wings and Ashen here. So we wings, Ashen. Yeah, thanks for the follow. Hope you enjoyed the stream. The Wings going into this one. Dispel myself at three stacks. Technically, I could dispel a four just to completely remove the debuff, but one stack is usually completely fine. Time we're at four stacks, I don't really want to spend a global on like a dispel. I'd rather healing. I'm gonna get another rain cast off, which is really bad. I have anything? I'm gonna sack somebody. I'm gonna bubble myself. Kind of just heal the other people that don't have anything on them. And I could dispel one of them too. I just delayed a little too long. That tank got absolutely hit really hard. I'm gonna help kill these ads, I just can't reach any of them. Okay, and then the last phase we have Holy Avenger. That's pretty much it, so it's gonna be rough. Holy Avenger here. It's my personal. Spell myself. Heal and get into the new safe spot. Right now we're really just trying to kill the boss before the next rain. That was an interesting run. That was fun.